Hey, welcome to the Babbling Boots YouTube channel where we babble about boots. In today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Bristle Black Chelsea boots from the Bristle Black Bootmaker Company in Indonesia. Uh, first thing you might notice if you can see the, uh, the outside of the box here, it says benzene. And you're like, well, this is a Bristle Black boot review. Why does it say benzene? Originally, I believe benzene was a company that started back in 2018 in Indonesia. Uh, this year, 2023, they actually merged with the Bristle Black Bootmaking Company also in Indonesia. So they took on the Bristle Black name. You know, as you can see here, some of the older benzene uh, logo and marketing still remains. So let's get into the uh, boots themselves. So they come in this uh, little boot uh, cover case here. It's not quite canvas, but it's some kind of uh, probably some synthetic material that's similar to canvas. Come in these little plastic sleeves here. Let me get this box out of the way. So these are uh, Chelsea boots on the um, Kujang last, and they are in dark brown overdyed um, horse butt from Merriam Tannery, which is an Italian tannery that's known for their, um, their horse butt leather. Initially, it does have a pretty strong leather smell. Nothing like Horwee and Chrome XL leather if you've ever smelled that, but these smell pretty good themselves. So as I mentioned before, uh, these are an overdyed dark brown horse butt, which basically is kind of similar to tea coring if you've heard of tea coring. I believe tea coring the process is just where the tannery themselves will kind of over dye like uh, the brown leather and then ship it off to the bootmakers and the bootmakers make the boots with it. Over dye is where the bootmaker I believe gets the um, gets the leather from the tannery and it's like a lighter brown or whatever color it is and then the, the bootmaker themselves will apply kind of an over dye on it and similar to t core you know the over dye will kind of wear away over time you know the more you wear it you know, the, the flex points and the crease points in the boots, that dye will slowly come off and it'll kind of give a nice patina uh, to the boots. It's pretty unique to, you know, how you wear them um, and what you, what you kind of put them through. As I said before, this is the Kujang last. You can see it's kind of a pretty voluminous last here um, around the toe box. This is an unstructured toe, which means that, you know, there's no like elastic or leather toe puff here. So this will collapse over time. Um, the more you wear it, this will kind of flatten out and probably get like kind of wrinkles in it which should give a nice kind of worn in look over time as well. Here's the, the welt is 365 degree Goodyear welt. As you can see here, the welt stitching actually looks pretty clean with it. Um, I'm running my finger across it here and you can't even, you know, feel where it is. And I think it's probably, probably the same for this boot. Yeah, it looks like this boot's also the same. Very clean welt joint. It is a standard heel block here. So it's not like a Cuban heel, which is more slanted or a woodsman heel where it's more curved. I mean, this is just an all leather heel stack. It's very thick, so it's, you know, very high quality. Um, it is just a, a single leather midsole here and then kind of like the, the Dr. Soul's half uh, sole here. It is also a um, hole cut. If you'll notice here, there's no stitching on either side. So basically this is just a single piece of leather that they stitched in the back. Uh, not particularly common in a lot of boot makers. A lot of boot makers do use multiple pieces of leather and it'll be kind of stitched here. So anytime you get a hole cut Chelsea boot, I think that's a pretty nice touch. As I mentioned, you know, these are horse butt leather, so they're not like shell cordovan, which is, you know, the, the inner, the membrane of the, uh, the horse rump. This is just a regular horse hide. So, you know, it will probably crease a little bit. It's not going to be, you know, there might be some shell in here as well, but it's not going to have like the very pronounced rolling that like shell cordovan would have. But nonetheless, it's very nice. And you can see um, a little bit of character here. Some of the, um, the stretch marks from the horse on the heel here. You might be able to see on this boot too here in the in the back you can see kind of some of the character of the horse hide itself which is very nice the hide itself is actually quite thick you can see here i have a you know several pairs of boots um, from viber grant stone you know other companies and this is probably some of the thickest leather i've actually ever seen for um, a chelsea boot um, let alone just a, a boot in general um, it looks like the inner uh, lining here is also probably just a calfskin lining and it does go you know all the way in the back so the sole itself is Dr. Soul's Super Grip sole. I guess it's kind of a half sole because you can see the part here where it says uh, Bristleback on it. Um, these will be my first Dr. Soul's uh, outsoles, but I've heard really great things about them. I have some, you know, day-night soles, some uh, Vibram soles, so I'm really curious to see how these will kind of break in, but I've heard that they're uh, very good for traction and very comfortable overall. As far as the stitching, looking at the stitching, it's very clean on these boots. Um, you can see there's not like any stitching out of place. There's no loose threads around the upper at all. There might be a couple of small flaws, like I'm not sure there's like a little, I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a little needle sized hole right here on the inside of the, the, the foot of the boot or the ankle of the boot. I'm not sure what that is, but it's really just a, a small uh, aesthetic thing. I'm not really concerned about that at all. 
Um, just, you know, over time, it'll probably kind of not even be noticeable. Now, they did over dye this um, at the, the boot makers themselves. So there's, you know, like a little bit of like dye on the tip here, um, kind of around here, but that's really, really minor. You know, that's getting really nitpicky with it. Overall, I would say the quality of these boots is incredibly high, probably on the, you know, the level of something like a Viberg. And you are paying $625 for the boots, so you would expect, you know, very high quality. So these uh, boots, I believe I got them in a size 41. Uh, my Brannock size is 8.5C. These are 41 um, EU, and they are a bit wide for my foot, um, especially in the, the toe box here. Uh, similar to kind of the Viberg service boots I have, I believe I have those in a size 8. And the, the toe box here is a bit wide for my foot. Uh, but the instep is nice because I have kind of a high arch, so the instep hugs my foot nicely. Um, so my foot's not like wobbling around in here and moving around. Um, it's just a nice secure fit anyway. Uh, if I had some nice thick socks on, I think that these would fit perfectly. These are definitely something that I would need to wear a thick sock for. Or I could just get kind of an insole um, in there and you know wear thinner socks as well. But overall, you know, um, I would say that for the price, $600, $25. The quality of, of the making of these boots is definitely on par with uh, something like a Viberg boot. Um, just the thickness of the leather, uh, the details of the stitching here, uh, just the all leather heel stack here, you know, um, the horse butt. It's all very, uh, very well done, very well constructed boot overall. As far as the ordering process for these boots, um, these are an, are an MTO from the Bristol Black website. So if you go onto their website, they have a lot of different MTOs for for different boots that they're running. The size I wanted for my boots uh, was sold out on their website, so I emailed them through their Instagram channel and their Instagram sales rep you know, got back very promptly with me and said that they could make the boots in my size. Um, I decided to order them through Instagram, which is, seems kind of like a shady process. You know, if you've ever ordered boots online, you know, typically you order them through a website. I bought these boots, paid for them through, I believe I, an invoice through PayPal and I just sent my my sizing um, to the rep in Instagram. So, you know, it's, it seemed a little bit sketchy at first, but the, the service rep was very professional, very prompt, and very nice. Um, never took more than a few hours to receive a response from them about the process the whole time. So no complaints at all about that. I think it's very professional. And as far as paying, I don't know how the, the website works. You order through their website, but when I ordered their Instagram, what they had me do was, I think the total was like $625 for the boots overall. They had me pay, I think it was like, you know, half of it as a deposit, like 300 something dollars um, initially to start the process of making the boots. Then when the boots were ready to ship, they just sent me another message on Instagram and say, hey, your boots are ready, you know, um, send us the other well, it was 300 some odd dollars uh, and we'll go ahead and, and ship your boots out to you and I sent the uh, rest of the invoice to them and they, I believe, shipped the boots out pretty much the same day. So the, the turnaround on these was very fast. Um, I believe I saw the MTO in the early April. That's when I placed my order initially. And then the boots were out to me by the end of June. And I think that was even with a delay. So these were, I think, originally supposed to be the beginning of June and they changed to the end of June, but that's still, to me, a very fast turnaround for a pair of, you know, made to order boots of this high quality. Um, so, you know, I give them a lot of credit for, you know, the promptness, professionalism of communication with customers. Customer service on these has been excellent. No complaints there. I do have a pair of um, Meerman Chelsea boots here that I've had for a couple of years now. These are, um, I believe, uh, Kudu leather from Meerman. And I love these a lot. These are, I think, probably the first Chelsea boots I ever got. Um, and these were 230-ish dollars. Um, they're also hole cut though, which is pretty nice for a, a boot in that price range. Um, the fit and finish is obviously, you know, you could probably probably tell here that the fit and finish of this boot just looks a lot more high quality. Uh, not that these boots are low quality by any means. I think they're an excellent value and I, I, I do love uh, my Meerman boots. Um, but just kind of the fit and finish, you can see here like the welt joint on this one's a little more noticeable. Some of the stitching, you know, kind of isn't quite as good. Here's a little bit of stitching showing. Um, it is, you know, obviously you can see here the, the leather uh, outsole is a, a good bit thinner on the Meerman ones, but still overall very comfortable. Um, these boots, I believe I got in a size eight on the Hero Last, and they are a bit, I think it's a UK size eight because that's how Meerman sizes their boots. And it's a bit snug. Um, it definitely took a little while to break these in because of how snug it was, but now that they've broken in, they're very comfortable. 
So I don't think I'll probably have the issue with the uh, the bristle black boots at all because of how wide they are. These boots are also, um, you know, very comfortable. There's a little more dye showing here as well. So it's not, it's just not as clean of an overall presentation as something like the bristle back boots. If, you know, I were someone new to the, the boot category or if I were looking for a new pair of Chelsea boots, this probably wouldn't be the first pick I would go with because, you know, the price overall, this is definitely a boot for someone that's more of an aficionado and knows a lot about, uh, you know, the different intricacies of boots and would be able to pick up on you know, small details uh, with fit and finish. If you're new into the, you know, the boot market and you're looking for a pair of Chelsea boots, though, I, I definitely recommend something like Meerman for 200 something dollars. You know, you get a whole cut Chelsea boot that's, you know, pretty good quality, uh, no complaints there. If you're someone that likes Viberg boots or, you know, looking for maybe a step up from Grant Stone boots and you're looking for something in that market, you know, Bristle Black Boot Makers of Indonesia, uh, quality so far seems to be very outstanding on these. And I'll probably do kind of an update on these boots after I've worn them for, um, you know, maybe a few months. And then I'll probably do kind of a more detailed uh, comparison on the, the last with some of the other boots I have as well, like Viberg service boots and then um, some Grant Stones as well. Um, so, you know, stay tuned for those. Um, if you like the, uh, the boot review, you know, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, I'll, as I said, I'll probably be doing some more um, boot reviews coming up, some older pairs of boots I have, and then some boots I have coming in, and then maybe just kind of a last comparison for some of these boots and an overall kind of size guide of how I've sized my boots and, um, you know, what will be helpful to other people. Um, so thank you for tuning in, and um, I'll see you next time.